I'm a school teacher, so let's talk about education first. School rules are bizarre. There are some weird school rules in Japan that really don't make sense, especially in junior high and high school. I'm glad that the high school I went to was relatively relaxed, but in many high schools, there are some crazy rules like this. Boys can have long hair, get a perm, dye their hair, shave their eyebrows. As for girls, they can have long hair, but they must tie up their hair. And it's the same as the boys when it comes to perms and dyeing hair as well. There's also a rule that you can only wear white shirts and socks with your uniform. As for underwear and such, that must also be plain white. In the winter, even though it's cold, the dress code doesn't allow students to wear scarves and gloves. That's ridiculous, don't you think so? Teachers say that individuality is important, but how could we be? These real rules have recently been disappearing, but there are still many schools that have such rules. There are many natural disasters in Japan. As you know, Japan is prone to natural disasters including tsunamis, typhoons, and earthquakes. In my opinion, the scariest things are earthquakes. When the Great East Japan earthquake happened, my brother lived in Sanda Prefecture. I was driving my car and heard about the earthquake on the radio. I immediately called my brother, because he might have been affected by the earthquake or tsunami. When he didn't answer my call, I became more worried. But after a while, my mother called me and told me he was safe. Apparently, luckily he was traveling around Aomori Prefecture during that time. So this is the moment that I realized that earthquakes were really scary. Anyway, earthquakes are scary, but there are at least six earthquakes a day every day somewhere in Japan. So Japanese people are kind of used to earthquakes. It's like this, foreigner. Oh, uh, an earthquake? What, what should I do? Oh, what, 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 what? Oh, oh, oh my gosh! Japanese people. Oh. Okay. So if you can react like this during an earthquake, you can say that you're a true Japanese citizen. Overworking work culture. When I was working for a company in Tokyo, it was normal to come to work around 8 a.m. and work until around 10 p.m. Also, when I was busy, there was a time that I slept over at the office. Of course, it's complimentary overtime work, which is extra work without getting paid. I can't believe it now, but at the time, I thought it was normal, because everyone worked in the same way. In Japan, such a company is called a black company. As a result of working for a black company, I became depressed for a while. When I worked for a company in Canada, my boss told me it was time to finish work, but I still had things to do. He said I could just do it tomorrow. I was so shocked to be finished so early. So why do Japanese work so hard? Because the Japanese tend to be pretty serious. However, because of our serious personalities, many people work so hard and damage our health, like me. The way of working style has now been changing little by little though. Easy to brainwashed by the media. According to the World Valley Survey, less than 50% of people in many developed countries believe in newspapers, magazines, and television. However, in Japan, nearly 70% of people believe in the information of TV and newspapers. In other words, the Japanese are easily brainwashed by the media. For example, when Japanese media says, wear masks, people wear masks. Therefore, most Japanese still wear masks, even though it's not obligatory. It's totally okay to wear masks if you think that you really need it. But Japanese people normally just follow the information from the media. I don't really like that about this culture. Because sometimes I feel like a human robot that has to obey commands. I want to say this to many Japanese people. The media is sometimes a liar. I think more Japanese people need the courage to think and act for themselves. Peer pressure. Japanese have strong unity, but 
Because of that, peer pressure is strong as well. I told you that there are still many people wearing masks in Japan. Then, for example, what if I remove my mask in the city? Everybody might give me a strange look and think something like, Why are you taking off your mask? In Japan, there is a strong belief that everyone must do the same thing together like this. Therefore, it's really hard for a non typical person like me to live in this type of society. Crowded trains. The image of a crowded train in Japan is really famous all over the world. When I live in Tokyo, I experienced it many times. When it was rush hour, people crowded the train so much that my body was lifted off the ground. I get tired just by getting on the train before going to work. So, if you want to live in the city in Japan, you have to be ready to accept that kind of environment. For me, I decided to use a bicycle instead to go to the office. It took time, but it was very comfortable. The disappearing of Japanese cultural things. The house I lived in when I was little was a Japanese house that was almost 80 years old. I liked the wooden structure and the scent of tatami mats. I also loved the Japanese garden outside. However, my family rebuilt the house when I was in elementary school. I didn't want to destroy my traditional house, so I suggested maybe we should renovate it. However, my proposal wasn't accepted, and a new house was built instead. It became a Western style house. I was excited to get a new house, but also missed the wonderful Japanese house. Japanese culture and think through times are being lost steadily in Japan. From Japanese style rooms, to western style rooms, from kimono to western clothes, from Japanese food to western food. People in Japan tend to admire western culture and underestimate the importance of Japanese culture, which is really sad. Of course, there are some great parts that have become better after being westernized. However, I think Japanese people should cherish Japanese culture more because that's the pride of being Japanese, right? Therefore, I try to wear kimono and do a tea ceremony as much as possible. The stereotypical belief. There are many stereotypical beliefs in Japan. For example, in Japan, it's said that you can tell your personality by blood type. Type A is serious, type B is relaxed, type O is rough, and AB type is weirdo. I'm an AB type, so apparently I'm a weirdo. Therefore, when I talk to the person who I meet for the first time, I remember that I have many conversations like this. What's your blood type? I'm AB? Ah, that's why. What do you mean, that's why? I don't think you can judge your personality only based on your blood type. So, I hate this stereotyped idea. Also, there are various stereotypes such as pink for women, blue for men, women should do household chores, and so on, married by the age of 30. This is one of the parts that I hate about Japan. Many food additives are used. In a video I made earlier, I mentioned that Japanese convenience stores are very convenient. However, these convenience foods contains a large amount of additives in the ingredients. For example, this rice bowl contains carcinogenic sodium nitrate. This bread contains trans fatty acids that cause arteriosclerosis. And this ramen is full of additives such as artificial colors, preservations, and emulsifiers. Many pre-made food in Japan look beautiful and delicious, but they contain a lot of these additives. What I hate is not only that dangerous additives are used, but also that few Japanese are aware of the dangers of such additives. I try not to eat foods that contain these additives as much as possible. Inconvenience for foreigners. I have many foreign friends in Japan, and they all say the same thing. Japan is inconvenience for foreigners. For example, the story I heard, when looking for a house in Tokyo, you are refused just by saying that you are a foreigner. The attitude of the people and visa process at the immigration bureau is terrible. The police officer stopped me to ask some questions in Shibuya, and so on. Regarding police officer's questions, I was also asked many times in Tokyo. 
However, overwhelmingly, foreigners are often approached a lot. A friend of mine said, Every day at the same station, police ask me my name, age, and job almost every day. I understand the police are also doing it for security, but for foreigners, it's really annoying. Please don't do that many times. Please. Japan is an island country, so people tend to be introverted. So there may be some people who don't have a very good image of foreigners. But it's not like people here hate foreigners. But some aren't used to living with foreigners. Summary. Just like every country, there are both good and bad things. I'd be very happy if you love Japan as it is. So stay safe, have fun, and thank you for watching as usual. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye!